Good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Kessler and welcome to today's Transportation Industry Best Practices webinar sponsored by the Infinity Workforce System and Vertical Alliance Group. Today's topic is Trucking Industry Best Practices. What are the major characteristics of the best trucking companies? But before we get started, uh, I'm going to share with you one thing about Vertical Alliance Group and the Infinity Workforce Solution. We are the online training company dedicated to empowering and streamlining safety programs for transportation companies across the United States. With over 850 plus training videos and a customizable system to automate, track, and document all aspects of training, it's no wonder more than 2,000 companies have chosen the Infinity Workforce Solution. The Infinity Workforce Solution not only makes it easy to build an affordable best-in-class training program for your drivers, but it also frees up your administrative time, giving you the ability to communicate more effectively and train employees anywhere, anytime. So if you're committed to having a training program that proves you value safety over profits, but all the while still improving your bottom line, type the words training in the Q&A box on your screen and one of our senior training specialists will reach out to you and share how the Infinity Online Training System can streamline your entire safety program while making your job easier. Also, uh, after the webinar, you will all be receiving an email that will give you a link to a webinar replay. Uh, that way you can share today's uh, program with others that couldn't attend today. And also, we'll also be sending out a copy of the PowerPoint that'll be used in today's presentation, so you'll uh, have those bullet points. Now, I would like to introduce uh, all of you to our uh, speaker today. Uh, our guest today is Bob Peru, who's a senior loss control specialist for Canal Insurance Company. Bob has over 45 years of trucking and insurance experience starting out as an independent owner operator with Landstar and then becoming a fleet owner. He became a safety manager at Landstar and later became the director of training and orientation. After 20 years, he moved over to the insurance industry, becoming a loss prevention specialist and quickly moved up to the ranks of vice president of risk management and safety of a large trucking insurance company. After a short retirement, he went back to work as a senior loss prevention specialist with Canal Insurance Company. Uh, Bob attended Indiana University Kelly School of Business. Bob is a certified director of safety th uh, through the NAPME uh, program and also a certified transportation risk specialist through the Motor Carrier Insurance Education Foundation. So without further delay, uh, Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you. Welcome this morning. Well, thank you, Steve, and uh, welcome everybody to the uh, webinar uh, this morning. It's really uh, nice to have a, a great audience, and we want to talk about uh, what really makes uh, trucking companies good and what makes them better and what we can do to help uh, uh, characterize those trucking companies that seem to excel in our environment today. So uh, we're always looking at the management uh, to see what kind of leadership uh, you have and if the leadership uh, works from the top all the way down uh, with their employees or their owner operators. Uh, we, we like to see very strong and consistent management as we go uh, look at the best practices of these trucking companies. Uh, positive attitude is, is so important. Uh, especially from the owner of the, of the company and the safety director. It's always nice to know that the safety director and the owner have a good relationship and they can discuss things uh, amongst uh, each other about uh, drivers, about the company, about safety issues that pop up from uh, time to time. Uh, we also like to see companies that have been in business for five or more years and that is basically uh, based on the in, uh, industry standards in terms of, you know, you get a brand new trucking company out there, a new entrant, they may not have the experience developed yet to be uh, where we would like to see them as an insurance company. So uh, it's also important that they have good uh, 
financials and uh, they don't skimp on things and uh, spend the money in the right places. We always have believed on the uh, risk management side that uh, if you spend enough money on safety that you're going to have a really good uh, trucking company. And uh, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce a couple of uh, senior loss control specialists that I have the honor of working with every day. Uh, Susan Ogle, uh, she's our senior loss uh, prevention specialist that has over 25 years of safety experience. And then uh, I have David Dean, who is also a senior loss control specialist. And again, David's got close to 30 years of loss control experience. So there's a lot of loss control and safety experience here. So uh, at the end of the uh, program, if you do have any questions, uh, please let us know and enter them in, into your computer so we can uh, answer those questions for you. Okay, moving on. Go ahead, David. Uh, I'd like to piggyback on your, your opening statement here. I think one of the measurements when I walk in uh, and sit down with uh, an insured is I look at that culture accountability in buy-in and determining how successful they are. And it kind of piggybacks on your opening statement. Yeah, and, and, and it's important that, you know, the first impression uh, that we uh, – get uh, can be a lasting impression and, and uh, we visit a lot of trucking companies uh, day after day and uh, some good some bad and we want to share this morning with you what uh, does make a, a trucking company uh, good uh, uh, the standards that we look for are budget for fleet safety to include the following uh, do you have a recognition program uh, tied to driver performance? Do you give your drivers safety awards, uh, annual bonuses, and uh, do you reward your drivers uh, for good roadside inspections? And I see that happening more and more all the time. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of companies given $100 for a clean roadside inspection. Clean driving records are very important. And I know those MVRs are sometimes uh, really hard uh, to get over, especially if there's a, 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 you know, a bad driving record in terms of uh, speeding 15 and over, over the limit. Uh, things like that can really make an MVR look bad. Uh, do you have a fuel mileage bonus? You know, do you pay drivers for uh, accident-free driving uh, year after year after year? Susan, go ahead. Yeah, also when he mentioned the consistent practice in the previous slide, all of these things would be pertinent to practicing everything consistently, regardless of uh, relationship, family member, uh, whoever it is in your organization, consistency in what you say and what you do and how you practice that, what's written needs to be practiced consistently through across the board of all, all staff, all employees. Exactly. And I think it reinforces your values as well. And studies show that that positive reinforcement goes a long way in driving performance. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you yep. Give me a pat on the back or a cookie, you get more out of it. Mm -hmm. I'll take the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as far as the bit business growth itself, uh, moderate growth is okay. Uh, 15, 20 percent, uh, you know, is not unusual. What we don't like to see is a trucking company that will, let's say, go from uh, 15 trucks to 50 trucks uh, within a very short period of time, let's say a year. So, uh, you know, if you uh, manage your growth really well, uh, then you're able to keep up uh, with your safety department and, uh, and be able to add more people as needed in your growth. And I think you have to understand that growth and how it's going to impact your ability to, to, to really maintain oversight of your operation and not let that finger off the pulse of the things that are, are going to contribute to negative trending. So uh, understand your, your, your manpower planning and actually managing those processes. Exactly. 
So, uh, you know, like I said, if you grow uh, double in size in a year, you know, that's a huge recipe for disaster. And go ahead. I hate to interrupt. I think one of the other things that really is really important is also looking at your internal bench strength, making sure that you have the right people in place that are subject matter experts that can help you control and manage that business. Yeah. And, and another thing is, you know, if, if you're a 15 unit uh, trucking company and uh, you're gonna, you, you wanna grow 10, 15 more units and you might think, oh wow, my insurance company is really gonna like this. We're gonna double, we're gonna give more premium and everything. Well, that's not what insurance companies like to see. They like to see very, very slow growth uh, as 15 to 20% and no more than that. So, uh, you know, growth is very important in how you grow. Now, this is something that we always want to talk about because this has become such a standard in our industry is the CSA and SMS scores. And I, I believe, and we as a panel here, we believe that trucking companies who understand CSA and SMS have a much uh, better vision of how to run their safety department. Uh, I would recommend that uh, any safety uh, person that's listening uh, this morning uh, should uh, get as familiar as, uh, familiarized as they can with CSA and SMS. Understand those seven basics of unsafe driving, hours of service, vehicle maintenance, controlled substance, uh, driver fitness, crash indicator and hazardous material compliance. Uh, from the insurance side, when we see unsafe driving and hours of service violations, uh, underwriters have a very, very uh, tough uh, time dealing with that. Uh, uh, insurance companies actually hate the unsafe driving because that's the area where uh, you're gonna have uh, more crashes because of drivers who consistently show up on your unsafe driving category. And if they show up time after time after time, what are you doing with those drivers? Are you uh, putting them on probation? Are you trying to retrain those folks? Uh, what exactly should you do when you have a driver that uh, gives you a ticket and say, hey, you know, I just got caught for speeding. Go ahead, Dave. I think it's also really important to understand or get granular on this, understand the root causes of what is contributing to these received violations or particular driver behaviors and tie that back to a more of an inward reflection on maybe you have operational influences that are contributing to these received violations, or maybe it's a cultural issue. Uh, adding on to that, I think that it just dovetails into being proactive because you don't want to be in a reactive state when something does happen. You have the claim, you have the accident because the litigation is going to file, uh, follow with any of that. And the more documentation that you have, as being a proactive and and uh, and documenting what you've done when you have these problems and trying to improve performance and behaviors is extremely critical when it comes to any sort of litigation and just helping people to learn and and to reduce similar per, uh, losses in the future. Okay, moving on. Uh, I assess scores. Uh, I'm sure you all are uh, pretty familiar with that. Uh, the ideal score, in, in our opinion, would be 50 or below, which means that if you go through an inspection uh, station or a way station, uh, it would be a, uh, up to the officer to uh, uh, either pull you around back, but in most cases, it's a pass of anything uh, at 50 or below. Uh, 74 and below is acceptable. If anything above 74, it's a mandatory inspect. So if the uh, DOT officer has time, he will probably ask you uh, to pull around back and prepare for a DOT inspection. So uh, 
use those as guidelines, if you will. Um, 74 and above, you don't want to uh, dwell in that area. Uh, a good trucking company is usually always under 74, and uh, your really, really good companies are at 50 or below. If your uh, ISS score starts creeping up, uh, take a look to see what you can do uh, to uh, bring it back down. The duration of the alerts are important, and make sure that you trend down and not trend up. Uh, as far as the good correct characteristics of a trucking company, uh, no conditional rating. Uh, it wants to achieve that uh, conditional rating. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't help you at all uh, with your insurance premiums, and, uh, and it doesn't help you at all when the, a DOT officer uh, pulls you over and they see the, that conditional rating uh, on their computers. You know, and I think you, if you have a, a conditional safety rating or you are uh, working to address category alerts, I, I always recommend having another set of eyes on that and drafting a fleet safety plan to, to affect a, a reduction in that. And it'll help you plan out your, uh, well, your attack plan to reverse that trend. Yeah. And it's easy to explain then that you've identified and you're reacting. Exactly. Um, a strong safety culture, uh, obviously good hiring practices. Uh, a lot of trucking companies uh, have trucks setting up against the fence that they can't fill simply because they can't find the right driver. So if you have trucks sitting and you can't find the right driver, then maybe uh, you ought to take a look and see what's going on out there. Uh, and it depends on the geographic area of the country because in some areas, drivers are a lot easier to find than others. But uh, you know, have those hiring practice in place, have a driver hiring policy that uh, you can put on the internet if you're hiring, hiring it all through the internet. Uh, have good driver training and safety discipline policies in place. And whatever you do, do never deviate from your safety policies. If it's in writing, you want to make sure you follow those policies. We would rather see you not have a policy in writing than to violate your own policies. And that comes up so many times in litigation. And that's, uh, you know, you can have a crash and not be your fault. But if there's anything that doesn't look good from the uh, safety policies or driver hiring guidelines, let's say you may have hired a, a driver that uh, you went outside of your hiring guidelines, then you just violated your own policies, OK? Uh, low driver turnover, and I know this is a, a big hot button in the industry, uh, we like to see less than 20%. And I know there's many of you out there that may have 100% uh, driver turnover. But 20% is a good uh, practice to have. Have a thorough orientation process. And what we mean by that, a lot of times we'll ask a, a trucking company, well, tell me a little about your orientation process. And they'll say, well, you know, we get the driver in for a couple of three hours and explain to them what they need to do and that's it. Uh, maybe that's not enough. I, I think for a good practice, a, at least a full day of orientation to include some safety practices and some safety topics uh, for the driver to understand. Bob, I'm going to piggyback on this because this is an area that I have a lot of passion in. So when I hire someone, I want to set the performance expectations to begin with. I want this relationship to be a long-lasting relationship. And studies over the years have indicated that training, effective training leads to good driver performance. So if you hire someone and you saturate them with defensive driving skills and you do a reiteration of the FMCSA rules and regulations, 
going to kind of fill a gap that has not really been effectively conducted throughout the industry. Uh, and you're going to lower that exposure to future claims and violations, both of which affect your premiums. Okay. And, and going off of that, uh, setting those expectations, and you're having this during an orientation, and you have to understand and remember that people are inundated with information at hire. They are hearing, uh, you know, blah, 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 cents per mile, blah, 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 uh, vacation, blah, 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 whatever. So if you can get those people back in there to reiterate those expectations, if it's, if it's in two weeks or whatever time frame you deem necessary, but get them back in there and remind them, this is our disciplinary policy. This is what we are expecting of you. And do you have any questions or are you having any difficulty and how, how, are, you, how are they communicating with dispatch, et cetera? You know, how are they doing on their vehicle maintenance reports and, and the pre and post? So get them back in there. And the other thing, when Bob mentioned the, uh, the, the safety policies, do not, uh, under any circumstances, select and take someone else's safety policy and put your name on the front of it. You need to tailor policies after your own operations. Do you even That's know? That's a good point, Susan. Yes. Do you know what's in that policy? Because whatever you have, you are held responsible and accountable to under any circumstance. And it may even have names in there of people that aren't even within your, within your organization. So make sure and tailor anything that, and don't, that's specific to you and do not have um, things that are fluff, you know, yeah. that you don't need in there. Just have what you need and, and how you need it and it's according to your company, your expectations. And I'm really big on driver orientation uh, simply because of two reasons. Number one, you have a captive audience at that time. Uh, chances are, if you do a three hour orientation and he gets out on the road, it may be a long time before you get him back in. So try to get as much covered, uh, you know, like drug and alcohol testing, safety practices, uh, uh, teaching the driver uh, about uh, your, your own policies, uh, uh, everything that he needs to know to equip him with as much information as, as he needs to do a good job. That's why orientation is so important. And that's a question that we ask when we uh, visit uh, our uh, clients. Uh, do you have an orientation program and how long does it last? You know, so uh, uh, three hours just sometimes just isn't enough. Because we are truly investing in the success of this employee in our organization. And Absolutely. The longer yeah. we can keep them in our organization, mm -hmm. the more successful they're going to be and the more profitable the care oh, yeah. is going to be. Uh, on the safety side, customer service, vehicle maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to build an employee buy-in to our program. Well, another thing, you know, uh, outside of the orientation is uh, newer equipment. Uh, a lot of drivers like to drive new stuff, you know. I like to drive a new car every time I get a chance. I, I, I just love the smell of a new car, you know. Drivers like newer equipment. They like uh, clean equipment, well-maintained equipment. Uh, Automatic transmissions, as you see here on the PowerPoint presentation, uh, has actually been proven that the accident frequency has gone down by as much as 15% with companies using automatic transmissions. You know, and it's funny that you bring that up, Bob, because, you know, I learned on a 400 split when I learned how to drive, and then all of a sudden, over the years now, with automatic transmissions coming in, a lot of the a lot of my insurers are telling me that when they're recruiting, uh, the driver base that's coming in now that's been driving for the last let's say five to ten years, they don't know how to shift to thirteen they speed. They, they don't know how to shift. <laughs> that's right. If only they learned on automatic transmissions, yep. which is amazing. Yeah, that is. Uh, and uh, uh, pet peeve here again. Uh, Governor said at 68 mile an hour or below. Well, we all know that excessive speed causes accidents and uh, the faster you go, the more fuel you're gonna burn. So uh, part of our best practices is try to govern your trucks at 68 or below. Not saying that you gotta have them at 60 miles an hour, 
But uh, if you have a disciplinary problem with a driver, you may want to consider cutting this truck back a little bit. So, uh, and the other part of that, Bob, is to make sure that the dispatch people are aware of this, that they can't mm -hmm. be pushing drivers and then having them go over hours of service yep. because they've done that. And I do want to go back to one thing uh, David mentioned, um, because it is about building a mutual respect. And if you get people back in there to reinforce these things and how are you doing and you're building a respectful rapport with your driver, letting them know that it, they are more to you than just someone to put in a driver's seat and haul things from point A to point B, C, and D. They are very important to the organization. Build on that and let them know how much they are valued. Okay? I just can't talk enough about that. And it allows you to address a yes. performance issue mm -hmm. when it's small before it becomes large so that you can, in fact, retain sure. that Absolutely. driver. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, driver compensation. <laughs> That's always a hot topic, you know. What are, what are we paying our drivers these days? And we all know that the compensation has increased tremendously over the last two or three years. And this is a trend that's probably going to continue uh, to slide upwards as the driver shortage becomes more of a reality. Uh, we believe that 40 cents, five cents per mile should be the minimum uh, based on what we're seeing out there. But, uh, you know, a lot of drivers are making even more money than that now. Uh, additional compensation for stop offs. Uh, make sure that you uh, pay your drivers for everything that they do. Uh, comp uh, compensation for unexpected delays. And I know that's hard to do, but uh, a lot of times if a driver gets uh, into a customer's uh, facility, he, may, he or she may have to wait hours uh, to get unloaded or to get loaded. Uh, if you have a policy that would help compensate that driver, uh, f you know, just a fraction, uh, you know, to make them feel better uh, is, would be a good uh, best practice to us. Owner operators should receive at least 70% of the gross revenue pulling your trailer. And uh, in many cases, we're seeing as much as 80 and 85% of the revenue uh, these days. Do you offer health insurance? And I know health insurance is very, very expensive and it's not getting any cheaper. Uh, if you can provide uh, something close to health insurance is better than having no health insurance at all. Uh, 401k plans, uh, those are actually easy to do if, uh, if you just want to add 2% uh, to the driver uh, on his 401k. Very important. Uh, vacation packages and safe driving bonuses and fuel bonuses. Uh, the compensation package is probably the most important things that driver look at in today's, uh, especially in today's economy. Wouldn't you guys agree? You know, I, I would agree. And, and over the years, and, and actually it's, it, it varies throughout the region. You know, as I travel around, it's compensation packages change by region, by segment of the transportation Absolutely. In industry. And I think some of the things that my, my best in class insurance have in common is really the benefits package, mm -hmm. health insurance. Absolutely. It's, yes. it's really important in mm -hmm. vacation. Uh, a lot of a lot of drivers will look at going to a regional carrier, not because they want to, but because it offers them a, a good compensation package on health insurance. Oh, absolutely. Uh, telematics, and well, I tell you what, uh, the electronics out there that drivers have and the telematics that they have access to and that you as a fleet owner, uh, as a trucking company have access to are just unbelievable. There are so many things that can help you manage your drivers, uh, manage your maintenance, uh, find out what, the, what your drivers are doing. We're seeing a lot of companies that are using uh, cameras now, uh, both ways where they look inside the truck and out, outside of the truck. Those are very good uh, practices to have. If you can get with a company that provides uh, good cameras, uh, those costs appear to be going down from what we have seen. And uh, the, the things that cameras can do uh, 
uh, as far as uh, excessive G-forces, speeding. Uh, it gives you another tool to manage your drivers better than ever before. Uh, GPS systems are, uh, you know, are out there that, uh, you know, I, I go into a trucking company and I see these huge big screens up against their wall and these dots all over the country indicating where each and every one of their trucks are. That is just so nice to see. And then I talk to the dispatchers and he'll tell me, yeah, this driver here, he's uh, taking, his, taking his break right now. This driver here is fueling up. This driver here is doing this and doing that. Dave, did, did you have a... You know, I, I did. I, uh, I'm a big supporter of this, especially, you know, all these the safety technologies. But I think the most important aspect of this investment is to manage the system make sure that the system that you implement or invest in, that you're managing the process to identify exposure, to make your drivers better, mm -hmm. counsel yeah. them based on these triggered events so that you can address an issue when it's minor yeah. before it results in a large yeah. loss. Uh, and uh, you know, it'll help you again on the retention side mm -hmm. and it will provide a good return on investment with this technology. Oh, absolutely. And most of us uh, have ELDs in their trucks now. And the uh, good thing about it, uh, ELDs can do uh, a lot more than just uh, the logging part of it, you know. So when you're looking at ELDs, see what you can get that measures other things that your drivers are doing so you can manage them better. Uh, also, a lot of, uh, of your truck, uh, uh, manufacturers now coming out with uh, uh, telematics like lane departure uh, systems and collision uh, mitigation technology, anti-rollover and electronic stability technology. One important aspect that I see in, in looking, when you're looking at some of this safety technology, verify that it's compatible with your operational software that you're using internally. So it's an ease of, of use throughout your, your operation. Yeah. And, and one other thing on that is make sure that you do not sign into any contract until you have actually had a chance to try that. that That's a really good point, Susan. Because, because man, you can get locked yeah. in and, and sucked into a deal that you're thinking, man, I, I want to get out of this. And yeah, a lot of your camera oh, uh, companies, absolutely. they want you to sign that three-year yeah, contract, sure you know. And I know and, a lot of accounts that have gotten, you right. know, they dug in and dug in a hole there and they have to wait for that contract so yeah. to be able to pick up a different piece of equipment. So sure. be very cautious about that. And um, because many of those, you're able to set your own thresholds so that you're not, you know, people will say, oh, they're going to pick me up every time I hit a hard break or whatever. But you yeah. can set thresholds for hard turns, braking and things like that. To, it will go off on certain so I guess you, I, I guess you want to do a little trial dating before Absolutely. you before you, you enter do. into this relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and one and one of the other things that you may want to consider if you don't want to get in with a big uh, company that provides the telematics for cameras is uh, you can buy these cameras at a truck stop now uh, for for thirty to fifty dollars. You know, uh, a camera, no matter how cheap it is, is better than no camera at all because you want to be able to prove your innocence if you're ever involved in a, in a crash. And, and also, um, also it's, it's even fine if it is our fault, if it's the driver's fault, that your claims team can get in there quickly and try to keep uh, emotions a lot more calm before they start going out and lawyering up and to say, hey, you know what, we see that this is a lot of a, our problem. So uh, we're going to go ahead and handle this before they get in there and people can stay calm. And so either way. Very good point, Susan. You know, yeah, yep. either way. Yep. Um, as far as driver uh, training is concerned, uh, use driver training programs and, and other uh, driver training aids because training, training, training is probably the most important things that you can do with your drivers. Even your most senior drivers who have uh, one, two, or three million miles uh, need to be retrained from time to time. We call it like a remedial training program. Have that uh, in place for your senior drivers and, and also use your senior drivers to help mentor 
your uh, young uh, and newer drivers. And, and here's the thing as far as hiring new drivers, and they don't have to be brand new. They could be experienced drivers, but I'm talking about any driver that you get that, that walks through your front door, take them for a road test. Longer road tests has proven in the past to reduce backing accidents by as much as 15%. Now that, uh, you, you know, and, and I know my whole audience out here, you guys have all had uh, your share of backing accidents. And the more <laughs> you do with your drivers when you have them uh, on, 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 the, on the driver, te uh, uh, testing your driver on the road test, the more you find out about him, you, not only how he drives, but you find out a little bit about his personality. So video training is important. And during that road test, that is the best that driver will drive because it's being observed. Uh, another trick uh, that's common in the industry, if you're able, is to do what you would call like a safety 5-0 later on. Follow that driver around in a route yep. where he, you're unobserved. And observe that driver's behaviors and see if he lives up to your performance safety standards. And, and one more thing, using your in-house knowledge base uh, and, and the skills of the more experienced drivers they're going to go out there and they're going to want to succeed and they are not going to want to go against what they just taught someone else. So you're going to be building that uh, foundation also, a little stronger foundation from that perspective. Mm -hmm. One of the largest trucking companies that I know, they drive brown trucks. If any of their drivers have had an accident, the safety manager or safety person that next day we'll go out with that driver to do an evaluation. So to me, that's a really good best practice. It's something uh, that you, you can nip it in the bud right away to ensure that those types of problems don't happen in the future. Vehicle maintenance, boy, I'll tell you what, we spend a lot of money annually on vehicle maintenance. And, and I know this is a tough subject and, and uh, uh, you know, you got policies in place involve your mechanics uh, in your overall safety program. Make sure your equipment is inspected daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, make sure that your drivers uh, do a walk around uh, every time they uh, get to their truck, you know, and, and you, you can go uh, do a fuel stop and, and uh, while you're fueling your truck, do a walk around. Uh, hit the tires, see what's going on. Uh, ensure that you have uh, certified uh, vehicle mechanics. Uh, I, I know the DOT likes to uh, see mechanics who are licensed and certified. So whoever works on your trucks, uh, make sure those guys know what they're doing. Reward mechanics. This is a big uh, topic to me. It, the more you involve your mechanics and uh, get them to understand your SMS scores, uh, and, and give them a reward just in the pat on the back, just like you do your drivers. The big things out there that we see are tires, lights, and brakes. Those are the three major components that drivers always get dinged for. Yeah, so I would like to also say that mechanics are not sitting there uh, in front of a crystal ball thinking, oh, gee, I wonder what's wrong with unit number 649. Uh, people need to communicate and you need to keep that communication open. Exactly. Driver, dispatch, look, using the SMS scores, but that communication, if there's a breakdown in one of those three areas, your, your vehicle could be missing something very critical, uh, but it's just because of a lack of communication. Right. Now let's talk about our driver selection real quick. Uh, make sure that you hire drivers with clear driving records. The cleaner the driving record, the less likely that driver is to have a serious, uh, serious uh, accident in the future. We would like to see a minimum of six months uh, probation period for anybody that comes drives uh, uh, for your company. And, and depending on what their MVR looks like, you may even go out uh, a full year on your uh, uh, probation. Road test for two hours or longer. And I know that sounds like a long time, but again, like we said earlier, the longer you spend with your driver, the more you're going to learn about this person. So uh, a two-hour road test, to me, is not that excessive. If you can afford to do that, by all means, uh, do that. 
based on recent studies by ATRI, new drivers that are road tested for extensive amount of times are less likely to have serious crashes. That's a big one, folks. That, that, that is really, really big. Good trucking company, companies perceive that good driver selection is the strongest part of your safety program. And this is what makes up uh, good characteristics of a, what we consider very good trucking company. So your overall driver safety management, uh, and this, in my opinion, includes everybody in your company from the top all the way down to the person that uh, cleans your shop area, okay? Uh, provide uh, route plans for drivers. Uh, don't always assume your driver knows exactly what route he needs to take. Understand uh, uh, if there's unnecessary uh, uh, mileage that uh, is uh, being driven because the route planning is not done properly. Hey, Bob, I'm going to jump in on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. So if, if you're servicing a regular customer base, rock books are an excellent form of, of making a new driver familiar with a route and will allow you to identify known hazards in that route or on site. And that includes low bridges and any kind of uh, uh, crashes or road construction or anything down the road. It allows the yeah. driver to become oh, yeah. a little bit more familiar with yeah. where he's going to go, uh, which which reduces some of that. Activity. Yeah, Absolutely. and especially with the regional drivers now, uh, when you, when you get these guys that do the short hauls, you know it's not uh, not as bad. But uh, download uh, electronic uh, information as much as you can. Document safety-related contacts with drivers. Document everything that you do and leave a paper trail because if you ever get audited by DOT, you're, you're gonna want to show that, hey, we've uh, done this and done that with the driver. Uh, have written training outlines and training meeting agendas. If you do any safety meetings, and, and I know this, a lot of trucking companies are getting away from safety meetings. Uh, they're doing these electronically now. I don't have a big problem with it, but every once in a while, you know, it's good to have the drivers all get together and uh, have, have a uh, guest speaker there, maybe. Maybe a speaker from your insurance company's uh, safety uh, group. I know that we've uh, done that in the past, so uh, that's always nice uh, to have somebody uh, from the outside talk to your drivers about what's going on. Well, again, you're building a relationship with your teammates for longevity. Yep. And, and they're learning from one another. I think mm -hmm. that, that that whole thing about trying to get people together for a meeting, I know that it's difficult, but in some way, shape, or form to share that information, especially when it comes to route, route mm -hmm. planning. Maybe someone got shipped from one route to another route. Well, you know what? Hey, maybe there's a low-hanging uh, a building here and, and, and it's easy to pick that off unless you go around the other way or whatever it might be. Yep. There are things that only a driver who has made that route before mm -hmm. is going to be familiar with. And, and it's good, just helpful information and sharing that information, that knowledge base. Right. Uh, another thing is uh, scheduled departure times. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. A lot of drivers, they love to wait until the last minute to leave. And, uh, you know, let's say they want to be at home with the family on Sunday and they probably leave at 10, 11 o'clock Sunday night. That's going to create a bad environment for the driver because he may have further to go and, uh, you know, may not get there uh, in a timely manner. So th that creates a lot of problems. And I think that's a, an area that, even in, you know, uh, most major office settings, that's an area that is, is taught and retaught numerous times is proper time management. Yeah. Absolutely. And talking about time management, we don't have a whole lot of time left. So we're going to uh, try to uh, get through this uh, presentation uh, just as fast as we can, folks. Uh, uh, again, like I said, a good practice is to schedule uh, departure times if you can. And I know not all of you guys can do that. Install a mirror check station. And what I mean by that is uh, on your uh, uh, facility, you can actually draw a line where a truck can pull up to and have his mirrors set uh, based on what that uh, check station does for you. 
um, there, you can go on the internet and find out. Mirror check station, Google it, and uh, it'll show you how to set, set up one. Uh, it's not very expensive. All it takes is a little bit of paint. Um, coach drivers when event recorders are, are uh, activated due to speed, hard braking, and excessive uh, forces, and I know a lot of you are doing that. That is a very good practice because once you find out that a driver is, is trending uh, with a lot of these uh, things, uh, try to get them in and talk to them as uh, safe, uh, quickly as you can. Have a following distance of six to eight seconds and slightly slower than the flow of traffic. And that's, it's a good practice to do. And I know in a lot of areas, you can't do that. You get up in Chicago, you leave a gap and somebody's gonna take it every time, you know? So, uh, uh, following distance is important because if you have bad following distances, uh, and, and, uh, and one of the biggest things we see are rear end collisions and folks, rear end collisions cost a lot of money for your insurance carrier. And uh, somebody always seems to get uh, hurt and they get hurt bad. Uh, provide vehicle, uh, in-vehicle training for exiting drivers. Uh, provide uh, post-crash in-vehicle training. Use one-on-one -on -one training. And a, a lot of times a safety director can do that or even one of your senior drivers can help you do that. Install right lane and left lane side fender mounted mirrors. It's been proven that those fender mounted mirrors absolutely help reduce losses, okay? Share CSA and ISS scores with all your drivers. Let them know what your scores are because it's the drivers that created those scores and make it to where the drivers are gonna help you improve those scores. If they know what the numbers are, then they know what to do about the numbers. Clear driving records have a significant impact on overall safety. A clear driving record is defined as no serious violations in the past five years and no moving or, or, or other violations in the past three years. That's a clear driving record. We, man, we love to see those, but unfortunately, there's not that many of them out there. Uh, driving records, and finally, and we're on our last slide, so uh, companies with 60% or more clear NVRs had a 42% lower crash rate than those with less than 60% clear driving records. So, uh, Steve, I, I think that's all we have. Uh, this is uh, a time where we have about 10 minutes. Uh, if anybody has any questions, and uh, we'll open the floor up to you, Steve. Sure, thanks, Bob. Uh, by the way, uh, this is fantastic information. I appreciate all of you. Uh, there is a couple of questions, and, and the first question relates back to, we had conversations, I believe, about uh, 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 pay on the drivers. And uh, Wendy asked that, you talked about 45 cents. She says, that 45 cents, should that be a base pay, or should that include all per diem, stop off, drop and hook, et cetera? That should be just a base pay, 45 cents per mile. Any other accessorials should be added to that, Steve. Okay, perfect. Uh, Chad is also asking, as it relates to delay pay, uh, how long would you consider before you pay for delays? Have you all usually, thought about that? Yeah, yeah. usually after a couple of hours, uh, I, uh, I would start uh, – putting an hourly uh, wage uh, to that, uh, for that driver. And that can be anywhere from, let's say $10 to $15 an hour. But you're compensating him uh, or her something for their extra time. Because two hours delay, you know, if, if they could be driving at 45 cents uh, yeah. per mile, that's, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it sure is. It is negotiated back at the time that the load is tendered with your shipper. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, you, can, you can ask the shipper for detention pay as well. So uh, there's a, a lot of things that you can do to help keep your driver because drivers who are always being delayed uh, because of the shipper or constantly, they're not gonna stay with you very long. They're, they're gonna move yeah. on and go with a company that uh, is gonna compensate you. Absolutely. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, people are, are, a couple of folks have asked this question about uh, uh, 
is there a, a, I guess, a benchmark on training frequency, safety messaging? Uh, is, is monthly better than quarterly or what? Any thoughts about that? Well, you know, it, studies show that adults learn most effectively through repetition. So I yeah. think you have to look at your messaging based on your historical and current exposure trending. And, you know, sometimes it depends. If you're running an over-the-road operation, you're not going to see your drivers all the time. I say bare minimum would we would be quarterly at the bare minimum. I'd like to see monthly, but yeah. you know, it's effective training that matters most. But the biggest thing, Steve, that I like to see is get those training topics out to your drivers at least on a weekly basis. You don't want to inundate them with a bunch of stuff, but uh, if you can have a uh, some kind of safety message once a week to the drivers and then once a month go into a little more detail uh, and, and doing some testing uh, wouldn't be a bad idea uh, at all, you know, so think about that. And you want to make sure that everything you do is documented so that you Absolutely. can show that you are in fact yep. putting these countermeasures yeah. up. And, yeah. and everything that we've talked about uh, this morning uh, is what, and, and if trucking companies go by those guidelines and you all are more than welcome to use this PowerPoint presentation any way that you want, if you go by what you see there, it will make you a better trucking company. Yeah. And by, by, by doing that, it's going to make you a safer trucking company. And, and make the training more pertinent to your problems and your exposures and also on the frequency right as following as quickly after you see a, a situation or a bad behavior or a poor driving habit or whatever, as quickly as possible, because then that way it's not forgotten, it's not left in the past, or an employee is saying, oh, the old man, he's not gonna see it for another month. You know, just, you know, the more closely you, you can track things and, and the quicker that you can call them out, I think is better. Yep. And it's, and it doesn't, you know, not calling them out negatively, but, and, and, you know, we, we talked about before we got on the call this morning, we were talking about uh, safety videos. Uh, we like the five minute safety topics. A lot of drivers love that as well because yes. five minutes is not much of your time. We don't necessarily want to listen to a safety video that lasts 45 minutes to an hour. But those five minute uh, training videos are really helpful. Perfect. That's uh, that's kind of how we look at it here in our company. Uh, a couple of follow-up questions here. I think this uh, also relates to the compensation conversation. Uh, Sergio was asking, uh, isn't all on-duty time compensable by law? Well, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Maybe that's the argument, uh, yeah. You, you, you know, I, I'm not really a lawyer, but yeah. uh, it, 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 some good attorney can probably uh, open that up and uh, uh, put, a, put a lot of uh, thought into it. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I could see where that would be a problem. So, uh, you know, I think that is what has led to yes. the uh, over litigation, the, right, to the success also of short training videos like Infinity Workforce Solutions yeah. has because now your driver can can receive this training in short, quick increments of three to five minutes that's easily absorbed and doesn't cut into that on-duty, not driving time. Right. That's very true. Uh, another question here, uh, uh, Robin is asking, uh, drivers have such a huge impact on a company's CSA scores. Uh, we have bonuses for everything and still have those drivers that, that uh, really don't do a pre or post trip. You can't prove it, but you know. Any ideas on how to get these guys and gals to not just be steering wheel holders, but good drivers? I, I do, and I love this game. So hopefully Robin's drivers go back to, the, back to the yard on a regular basis. What I used to do was go out there and put some little lockout tag outs mm -hmm. uh, around the truck, ones that aren't really visibly noticeable, but they can say, see Robin. You can place them around on slack adjusters or glad hand seals. On the dipstick. 
on the oh, yeah. stick and yeah. it can stay Steve Robin. And now I'm inspecting what I expect and that driver brings that back to me and I give them a reward. It may be a gift certificate yep. to Starbucks, but if they don't bring it in, I know who to focus on. Then you have a disciplinary issue that you need to deal with, you yeah. know, and you revert back to your disciplinary policies. And I'm sure part of the daily pre-trip inspection uh, is going to be part of that. If they're in violation of that, then, you know, it's a day off, it's a write-up, uh, even up to and including termination. If there's no consequences to behavior, people will always continue that pattern. And I think that's one of the key, ingre key ingredients to an effective safety culture is that to be firm, fair, and overall consistent in the application of any of these policies. You have to make it a habit. Perfect. Uh, another quick question here from Wendy. Uh, she's asking uh, the panel, what are your thoughts on uh, paying drivers hourly versus cents per mile? Well, wow. it's a good question. Um, it, it depends on uh, how far they're going and what uh, type of uh, uh, freight they're hauling. Uh, yeah. if, if they're local, I, I would mostly consider hourly. If yeah. they're going more than uh, uh, 150 <laughs> mile radius, I would think mileage. I actually have a couple specialty fleets that pay their over the road drivers hourly. And they are, uh, amazing carriers, but they are specialty fleets yep. and they're very selective. I would say they recruit the best and they retain the best. And I would recommend that if you are thinking about maybe doing an hourly uh, pay schedule, that you would also have a mileage pay schedule and that, that would run parallel with it, you know. So a driver can probably make uh, a choice to see what if he would rather be paid by the hour or by the mile. Makes sense. Hey, uh, one last uh, comment here, uh, and, and it's related to, I think there was a comment, I'm not sure, maybe Susan uh, talked about no deviation from your safety culture. And uh, the comment, and this is my comment, is so often we hear uh, uh, slogans like safety is our number one priority. And uh, sadly, priorities change. Uh, so in, in, the, in the world that I think about, uh, you know, safety has to be a core value of the company that doesn't change depending upon circumstances. So that's well, just a comment that I had out there is you've got to, if you can't do it safely, you shouldn't do it. And, and, uh, and you know, in, in the safety arena, you know, it, it's, it, it's in black and white, you know, and yeah. uh, there is no deviation. Uh, it, when you start deviating your safety policies, what else are you going to deviate? Well, uh, you know, you have to be strong and firm um, with your overall safety program. And once you deviate, you are no longer defendable. That's correct. Yeah. It, it, let, let me give you, a, for an yeah. example, if, if you have a safety policy and you have followed that safety policy to the T and then all of a sudden yep. you bring in a driver who does not meet your safety policy, but you hire him anyhow and he goes out and has a serious crash, uh, the attorney is going to tear They'll get all a, over that. a big hole in, in that <laughs> case, even if, now this is the key, even if it is not your fault. Oh, yeah, because yeah. if you're not following your own company policies, you're actually putting an, a, an unqualified driver on the road, and you're never going to win that in court. And just remember that negligent hiring practices can cost your insurance company a lot of money. Yes, and your can. company, company yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, because, yeah, it all goes back. Your money. Yeah, it all goes back yeah. to yeah. your premiums. Yeah. 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 Got to follow, follow, yeah. follow your yeah. own policies. All right, folks, uh, uh, would you pop up the, the last screen real quick? Uh, I think there's one more slide behind this one, Bob. Yeah, that's my contact information. Uh, I just wanted to tell everybody that if you have other follow-up questions that you would like to present to Bob, David, or Susan, if you would send those to me at my email address there or just pick up the phone, give me a call, I'll be happy to reach out and see if they can uh, get back with you and, and uh, 
uh, answer your questions for you. I hope that's okay, Bob, if I do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. But uh, uh, lastly, uh, I, I want to thank uh, all of you there, Bob, David, and Susan. This was really great information. I think you've provided a good guideline that companies can uh, look to to uh, try to meet all these good requirements that we have to have to be a top-notch trucking company and be safe and defendable. So uh, yeah. I appreciate everything that you all presented today. Thank you all very much. You folks are welcome and uh, have a happy holiday, everybody. Same to you all and uh, to everybody out there that was listening today. Uh, appreciate you being on and uh, we'll look forward to having you join us on a, a webinar uh, next month. Thank you all very much. Goodbye. Bye.